Hey folks, welcome to the What's New in Fusion 360 for design and engineering video. This is the November 2022 release where we've introduced a cornucopia of new updates to keep improving our user experience. Thanks for joining us. Let's get to it. To start us out, we'll take a look at the design space. Giving the parameter table interface a bit of a refresh has given us the ability to add a much needed core functionality update. This dialog is now much more intuitive, and if you're new to creating parameters, then this is a great chance to give them a try. You'll now have a cleaner, more comfortable experience when working with your custom parameters. We've added the ability to search any parameter you've created in your design, as well as filter the parameters by feature, body, or component, and then promote them to custom parameters after use if needed. We've also added the ability to toggle value updates being applied immediately so that multiple parameters can be edited without requiring recalculation between each change. So this allows for better workflows for complex parametric designs by aggregating all of that calculation into a single recompute operation at the end of the editing. The parameter table does default to automatically update. This preserves the original workflow of adjusting one parameter at a time. Additionally, we've enabled the ability to resolve missing XREFs in your models. Should something happen like a file get deleted or file change and no longer be a valid reference. This leverages the recently released change component functionality from a few releases back. You'll also notice a new missing reference experience that shows up in the browser tree. Finally, we move the joint limit creation options into the initial joint dialog box. This saves everyone that extra step of adding the limits after placing the joint. Now, you can select the motion tab and then immediately input your design's required limits. Next, we have a couple of updates in the drawing space. Adding advanced printing controls to the interface is something we've always been excited about. On the back end of this printing update, you now have the ability to pull printers and paper sizes directly from your operating system, whether you're on Mac or Windows. The print dialog itself now allows you to print drawings at any scale, multi-sheet print, add offsets, dynamically preview the sheet names, control print ranges and orientation, as well as any other thing that you really desire when it comes to printing and plotting within Fusion 360. Also new this release is the duplicate sheet option. This command creates a duplicate sheet within the same drawing file. You might use this command when creating documentation that covers both dimensions and installation information like fastener torques or paint. Here's what's new in simulation and generative design for this release. We're fast approaching our commercial release of electronics cooling and continue to make user requested tweaks and enhancements. For this Fusion 360 update, we're excited to show off the new results environment for e-cooling. You'll notice this is a similar look and feel to the injection molding results view and includes a guided result with some design advice based on the temperature threshold specified during setup. The granular results are also available with both air and solids now broken apart for even more detailed views. Additionally, we've added point probes for specific location results, comparison ability to verify different design choices or result types, and my personal favorite, flow lines. Now you can visualize the flow patterns within the model to better understand how your geometry may be affecting the air movement. Keep in mind, these are in mind, these are static paths, but generally show the air behavior inside the model. As always, because this is a preview feature, things may continue to shift and change, but we think you'll be pretty pleased with the results experience. Lastly, this go around, let's look at generative. We've been telling you about the new solver that's been coming online for the past couple of releases. With this update, we've enabled even more functionality out of the new solver including displacement limits, remote loads and constraints, point masses, and moments on cylindrical faces. If you're using any of these more advanced boundary conditions, you'll see the new solver result for each applicable manufacturing method and material. This solver is still in a preview state, like e-cooling, so more changes will be coming in the future. 
Oh yeah, speaking of preview features and cloud solvers, there's one more thing to share about back in the modeling environment. As a response to customer feedback, we've now added a volume slider to the automated modeling result dialog that allows the user to inflate or deflate the result. Take this for a spin and give us your comments. That about wraps us up this time. If you're an electronics user, definitely check out the new release video for that one as well. We're super excited to announce the release of our signal integrity extension in conjunction with ANSYS. This extension provides advanced routing techniques, signal analysis, and design guidance based on physics simulations being run behind the scenes. It's a game changer for digital electronics design. As always, check out the What's New blog and the manufacturing video too. That's all we've got for November. We'll catch you next time.